going to talk today about testing a motor and how to determine if a brushless motor might be bad. Last week a friend of mine nosed over a Flex Innovations RV8 which has a Potenza motor in it. It's a pretty big motor. It needs a 100 amp ESC 6S battery. When he nosed the plane over he didn't pull the throttle out quickly enough and within three or four seconds the plane actually caught on fire. The ESC went up in smokes and melted the foam and charred the motor a little bit. You can see it's a little a little burnt in a couple places here. The wires itself are not damaged. When I took the can off, I don't really see a problem with the windings. They seem okay to me, but on the other hand, if you look really closely under a magnifying glass like I did here, then it's possible there's something here, or possibly I'm just looking for something that I think is bad. But in any case, I went out on YouTube and found a video on how to use a LC tester because you can't use a regular multimeter to properly test these without using an electric drill. So I picked one of these meters up on Amazon for $40 and I decided let's see what we can do. So you have to remove the can to, to get a accurate number. So if we turn the meter on I have it set to 200 microhenries on the meter itself. meter came with some nice alligator clips for the probes so we're going to hook up the yellow wire on the left side and then we're going to hook up the center wire which is the black wire and we're going to get a reading so the reading after it settles is 19.3 I'm going to write that down on a little pad I've got here now I'm going to move the red lead on the, the probe to the other side, to the right side of the motor. And we've got 19.4, 19.3 after it settles. So we've got two numbers that are identical. But now when I move the black lead on the probe to the outside, and we let it settle, it's at 17.8. So there's a fairly large difference there. But is that difference enough to say that this motor has an issue? I'm not sure. So what I did, I decided let's go get a known good motor. So I went into my shop and I had an old KDA motor that I know is in good shape. Never had any issues with it. And I took the can off because again apparently you can't get a good rating with the can on. And let's hook up the, the probes on the LC meter to this motor. So we'll start on the left side. We'll let it settle. And it's 10.9. I'm going to move the black lead on the left to the right side of the motor. I'll let it settle and it's 11.1 .1. now we'll move it to the outside wires on the motor and it settles in at 11.2 so they're fairly close we've got a 0.3 difference Okay, so I went back into my garage and got another motor. This is a torque motor that I know was good. Took the can off to get a consistent read. There's no color coding on these wires, so we'll just have to remember where I connect up the probes. So we'll start from the left side. And after it settles, it's 20.8. So now we'll move the from 
the left to the actually it's from the right to the left. And we're getting 20.7. Doesn't look like it's going to settle up. 20.6 after it settles. Now we'll move it to the outside leads. Let it settle, and it's 20.4. So again, we've got some pretty close numbers. It settled at 20.3, so I'll write that down. Okay, so if we look at this on the KDA motor, which is a known good motor, we've got a 0.3 difference. On the torque motor, we've got a 0.5 difference. So looking at the flex innovation numbers, we've got a large difference here between the 17.8 and the 19.3, you know, 1.5. So that's a larger difference. So I said, all right, I had a really old hacker motor that I fried many years ago and I kept it for spare parts in case I ever needed a ball bearing. This motor is bad. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but the windings are absolutely smoked on this motor. They're melted, there's some burnt wires, and this is a bad motor. So this is a really good test right here as to what we're going to see on this hacker. So let's take the probes. These are not color coded, so I'm going to start on the left side. And let's see if it settles. It settles at 14.8 on the left. I'll move the left to the right side. Oops. We'll let it settle. 12.7. Already we've got a large difference. And let's go to the outside. Let's move the red on the center to the, the left side. And here we go. This one really shows off. 2.7. So we've got a huge difference. So now if we look at this chart that I wrote down here, you can see this is the Flex Innovations. Here's the Hacker. These are two motors that, well, the Hacker we know is bad. The Flex, I'm thinking it's bad, but I'm not 100% sure. Then we have two good known motors down here. This one's off by 0.5. This one's only off by 0.3. So this seems to be a fairly valid test at seeing if a motor is bad, but the question is what can the variance be before you say the motor is bad? That's what I don't know. I'm hoping for some comments from people to see what you think is enough of a variance to say, yeah, the motor's got a problem. Um, also, I picked this mo this uh, tester up. It just arrived today. It was about $40 from Amazon. It's a nice little tester. Um, the display is tiltable, so you can angle it, which is really nice. It runs on a 9-volt battery. It comes with a very nice uh, carrying case. comes with two sets of probes, one being alligator clips, the other being traditional probes. And, uh, and you know, not bad for, for 40 bucks. And I've got it set to 200 microhenries for this test today. And if anybody would like to chime in in the comments, I'd love to hear what you got to say about this. Um, what you think of this flex motor? Is it good or is it not good? 